Woohoo-fo's over there making all kinds of noise this morning. How rude. How, how rude, exactly. How's everybody doing today? Hello from the North Carolina Zoo. Your Zoo Adventures team is with you today. My name's Steve. Behind the camera is Chelsea. Good morning, everybody. Hope you guys are having a great time. We decided to come to the aviary. Um, not to talk about birds. Uh, not to even talk about the plants. Talk about colors. But there's a catch. The aviary is full of color. We thought we'd start here, but you're going to need to come to the zoo to see all the colors in the aviary. We're going to show you some other animals that are out and about as well. I guess we can give you one color. Let's give you a purple. Let's give you a purple. But today's episode is going to be more about how animals rely on color, how they use color in their lives. Our first stop, well, tune in and find out. Okay, okay, okay. So we told a little bit of a story. When you get an animal doing something like this, displaying those amazing colors, you have to share. Chelsea, you said you knew what kind of bird that was? It's a sun bittern. A sun bittern, huh? Yes. And that display is really important to them, and that's what it is. It's a display for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they can be doing that to cool off, sometimes to dry off, maybe sometimes to display to a female, or even to be threatening. And I think that's what this one's doing with us right now. Say, here I am. Look at those beautiful colors. Fell right into place. Again, when you're at the zoo, you really can't plan on what's going to happen. And you'll see that a couple times today in the episode on colors. This again, a sun bittern kind of displaying to us, to a female, or to the other birds in the area. Sun bittern. So there's an example of colors in the aviary. As we walk through, if we see one, we'll, let, we'll stop and share with you. That's a blue-crowned hanging parrot. Beautiful greens. What do you think those greens are for? I think camouflage. I think you're right. In this, in this case, they might use some of the other colors for display, but I think in this case, most of those colors are for camouflage, to blend in or to hide in their environment. Blue-crowned hanging parrots. So Chelsea has an eclectus parrot in the shot. More colors within the aviary at the North Carolina Zoo. This is really all about camouflage though. Even though you guys can see that red is right there and that really pretty yellow on the tail, this color disappears if they were to get into the nest cavity, for example, of a tree. That color just disappears. Whoa, what a pretty red in the sun. But it disappears when they get into the shadows. Even more so than black mite. Again, this is an eclectus parrot. This is Princess, one of the three animals that we can share with you for sure, within the aviary, displaying that beautiful red color. I didn't think you'd believe me, but I wanted Chelsea to show you again. Okay, that was Princess, because Princess didn't believe me either. Princess is a female, check this out. This is a male. This is a male eclectus parrot. Female, male. For a long time, they thought they were two different species. How cool is that? Well, Chelsea, this isn't exactly how I thought this was going to work out. I thought we'd come in, shoot the introduction, and then leave. But as we walk through, we're kind of getting lucky to see a lot of different colors. On the left in the image, the pinkish bird, that's a scarlet ibis. On the right, that's one of our waterfowl, a white-faced whistling duck. Scarlet ibis on the left. And white-faced whistling duck on the other side. More colors that you can look for in the aviary. Maybe you have colors like this at home. Make it a matching game. The colors that we share with you, can you find colors like this in your house? Let us know. I found one of our friends. It's Arabella. How are you doing, Arabella? Are you doing good? 
Can you point to your favorite bird? Do you have one? Do you have a favorite bird? This one? Do you remember her name? Her name is Princess. I love that. Oh, this one? The purple, you, is purple your favorite color? It's one of my favorite colors too. Well, it's so nice to see you today, Arabella. Thanks for being here today with us at the North Carolina Zoo. I hope you have a good visit. See you later. How fun is that? But this is really a cool thing you can use when you come to the zoo. And look at all the other colors. So many things you can find. This is a bright yellow bird with black. The one that Arabella just showed us, the, the amethyst starling, is a beautiful purple. You met Princess earlier. But so many different colors. Do you have a color here? Favorite color, Chelsea? I, I love purple. That's, you love the purple I one have too? To, I have to say that... Purple glossy starling yeah, down he, here is really pretty. He's got a lot pretty. of colors on him. Yeah. There are some really good ones. All right, guys. Well, I kinda, I'm a little surprised that we saw as many colors as we could because in the aviary, you've really got to take your time, slow down, and look up to find the animals. Bye, y'all. So check it out. We got more colors to share with you. So all about colors, right? So we thought we'd go to the aviary, go inside the aviary, and I was like, yeah, birds are cool. How about dart frogs? Look at this. There's one right there. They have bright colors as well. This is the Panamanian golden frog. Believe it or not, extinct in the wild, guys. How crazy is that? But they've got that very distinct coloration, that gold color. But if you think that's cool, check this out. Let's see if we can find them over here. I scoped it out a minute. Oh, he's, he's hunting. I scoped it out a second ago when I found one. Here's one over here. Here, here. He's hunting. He's looking for food. He was a second ago. Now he's going to say, oh, here comes people. <laughs> So we're in the aviary. This is the pleasing dart frog. They come in a variety of colors. This is the green phase of the pleasing dart frog. How about some thumbs up for Chelsea on that shot, huh? And dart frogs are aposmatic. Fancy science word. Fancy science word. They're aposmatic. That means that there's something about them in their cut, the word means there's something about them that makes them dangerous. Skunks are aposmatic. These guys are aposmatic. So, what makes these guys dangerous is in their name. They're the poison dart frog. So, the animals that they're eating, the poisons from that are transmitted into the animal, giving them that poisonous touch. You can't touch them. Another one of our animals here that have a very distinct color. How cool. Nice shot, Chelsea. So we're all about colors. And you thought, you know what? How do you not show these cotton balls? So white, yeah. This is the Arctic fox. And since we're talking, talking color and why animals are colored the way they are, this is an amazing camouflage, sort of. <laughs> Obviously, without the snow and ice around him, like he would, like he would have in the, in the winters of the Arctic, he doesn't blend in. But put a white shroud around him of snow and ice, poof, he disappears. Right? Amazing camouflage. So if you're going to have this color in the wintertime, how do you stay invisible in the summertime. What would you do to stay invisible? Well, how cool would it be if you could change your coat? If you could change your, change your outfit to blend in? Not all animals can do that, but the little Arctic fox can. As a matter of fact, in the summertime, they shed out that thick white coat, and then they put on a coat that looks more rocky in color. It's kind of a grayish blue. So they're literally changing their coat color with the seasons. Another one of those amazing adaptations animals have to deal with the spaces they live in. Arctic fox, white, dark white. In the wintertime, changes that coat color 
to more of a grayish blue to blend in with the rocks in the Arctic where they're found. Zoom. And he's like, you know what? I'm done with this episode. Or at least this segment. All right, we can be done with this segment. Colors. This is incredible. We've been here before, and Keeper Jade said we can come back and do this. This episode's all about color. Check this color out. Look at this beautiful red. These are bongo. They're a mountain antelope. And you say, well, I can see them really easy, Steve. That, that's not a very impressive color. But man, you put these guys into the forest. They're a mountain antelope of Africa. You put them into the forest, and that red color just disappears. Even better than black, believe it or not. Black stands out in the forest. You can see a black shadow in the forest. This red just disappears. And notice the stripes. The stripes also kind of break up the outline of the animal, kind of break up the pattern. Those wonderful horns on top of the head. It's amazing, beautiful animals. Behind walking is a Sitatunga. Did you just, can you show the Sitatunga? Might as well since we're here. <laughs> they look a little similar. They do look a little similar, and the habitats are kind of the same. Sitatunga, a little bit more of an aquatic species, but you're going to find them along streams and creeks. So again, a lot of dense foliage, so that color again blends in. And we had planned to share the bongo and the Sitatunga if we could. We also have another animal. Could you show them the Adra? This is kind of a bonus, even for us, for Chelsea and myself, during the colors episode. Look at that color. Now, are they a forest animal? You're going to find them in the deep woods of Africa? No, of course not. This is a desert species. This is a desert-dwelling animal. So look at that color. I did nothing to scare you. <laughs> so look at that color. That white and that kind of a brown. I didn't even scare you either. <laughs> Is it just me? Herd mentality. One Herd ran mentality? Said the other one had to go too. <laughs> so when these guys lay down, the Adra gazelle that Chelsea's on right now, when they lay down, that really neat kind of sandy brown, that rusty red, again, helps them kind of disappear. It turns them into a rock almost in Africa, in the, in the plain, in the deserts of Africa. And when standing up, that white color on the bottom just kind of makes them all kind of blend in together. So yeah, for our colors episode, the bongo, amazing, that beautiful red color. Sitatunga, same, a similar type of lifestyle. You'll find them again in um, a little more of a forested region. And then the Adra along the desert colors of animals within the North Carolina Zoo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome as we continue this episode on animal colors. Why are you so formal? Because it felt good being behind the table and thinking this is my podium and my platform to speak from. And since we're doing animal colors, we thought zebra colored sort of tablecloth and this beautiful mural behind me, which we're not going to talk about at all. <laughs> we have two more animals to share with you, and we're going to do them both back to back. And we're in the RTI building at the North Carolina Zoo because it's too cold. Just to give you a hint of what might be coming out. It was too cold for us to be outside, and we're showing you some of our animal ambassadors, the animals that we can handle. These might be... Reptiles. Are you ready? Let's start with the one I know you guys are all excited to see. Because they're one of your favorite animals in the whole wide world. Aren't they, they? I mean, they are for me. They are for you, Chelsea? They are for me. Good deal. Let's see. Can you hold that? I can. While I get our digital friend, or, well, I get our <laughs> digital friend out of the box. Oh, I mean, he's there. digital to all of our digital friends. Oh, but not well, to so us. That's true. <laughs> so he is digital to you guys. Great point, Chelsea. So again, this is all about colors. I'm just kind of touching on animals and the colors that they have. And you guys that have seen us do this before know that if there's a bag, there's probably a snake in here. And there is. Don't tune it away. This is one of the sweetest snakes on the planet. 
in a beautiful color. You're not a big fan of snakes, I get it, but look at this color. What are you doing, Pogo? Pogo is a ball python. We've met Pogo before. But look at the color. Pogo, don't stick your tongue out at them. What are you doing? They're good people, I promise. <laughs> Tasting the air. It came out of the bag. She's like, where am I now? But what do you think that beautiful color provides the ball python? I hear a dishwasher or clothes washer going. <laughs> you guys might hear that too. What why be colored like this? What does that provide the ball python of Africa? Why have that really neat color and you can see the belly is a little bit lighter? Light belly, dark on top, counter shaded. We learned a little bit about that with the seabirds, didn't we? And if he's a terrestrial animal, Chelsea, do you know what terrestrial means? It means on land. It does. So if he's living primarily on the land, that wonderful color provides incredible camouflage on the jungle floor. This is Pogo. He's an older ball python in his late 20s, maybe early 30s. Lifespan in the 30s, maybe longer, with the amazing care given to them here at North Carolina Zoo. But look at that color. We wanted to share that with you and talk about that camouflage. Beautiful color. Say one more hi. And another, our other animal is also a cold-blooded animal, ectothermic. Ready, Coco? Chelsea's doing double duty, guys, so give her some props. She's holding on to the microphone and the camera. I'm not going to put you back in your bag, Pogo, for right now. Because we're not going anywhere. But I will put this on the right way. Digital guests, tell me if he leaves. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't leave. Let me rinse my hands off real quick. You watch some dishes? You watch some Pogo? <laughs> we're making sure. Make sure Pogo doesn't leave. How about these cool little, how about these cool containers, huh? They're coolers. And our design team with North Carolina Zoo, our graphics team, designed those cool wraps. Thanks, design team, graphics guys. All right, here's our other animal we brought with us. You can just hear them now, Chelsea. Aww. You can just hear it. I can. So this is Franklin. Franklin is an eastern box turtle. And again, we're one of the reasons we wanted to bring this guy to you is because he's different colored than a lot of other box turtles you may have seen out there. A lot of times this orange is replaced with a yellow on many box turtles. He has that really unique coloration. You can find it in the wild of North Carolina. You can see that color sometimes but it's not the normal color you'll see. And it's really on the front legs and the head. If we're talking animal colors, Chelsea, how good can you get to the eye? Very good. The eye color of the box turtle is really important. Do you guys know which color is which? The eye color helps determine, or helps us tell, doesn't determine, I'm sorry. Let's rephrase that. It doesn't determine, but it helps us to tell the sex of an animal, male or female. This beautiful reddish color indicates male. Male. Females are more of a tan to yellow colored eye. Why? You'd have to ask them. <laughs> I don't know. But really fun little color. And then, of course, the shell is darker. 
and that's camouflage, right? This is being able to provide that because there are some animals that may still want to have a turtle for lunch. Literally. And the color that you see again, remember we did this once before with you guys, the color comes from scales on the bone of the turtle. The shell itself is bony and made of a combination of the ribs and backbone. The color comes from scales on top of the bone. Eastern box turtle and colors. Thanks, guys. So how about this? We're going to talk about counter shading. Chelsea, do you know what counter shading is? I do know what counter shading is. You do? Why don't you tell them what counter shading is? Counter shading is when an animal is dark on the top but light on the bottom. Dark on the top, light on the bottom. And this horned puffin is showing that very, very well. The reason you counter shade is if I'm a, if I'm in a, if I'm a, uh, a predator in the water looking up, out of the water, that white color disappears. And if I'm on top of the water looking down, oh, there you go, Chelsea, thank you. If I'm looking down, the dark disappears. And you see it in these seabirds. The myrrhs have it too. There's Chelsea showing you a thick-billed myrrh there. Some of the seabirds here from North Carolina Zoo. Dark on the top. Look at Chelsea doing the, the whole I'm dramatic trying. footage there. I love it, that was great and light on the belly. But not just, you don't just see it in seabirds. You'll see it in uh, like cougars, for example. They're a little bit more tawny, a little browner on the top, a little lighter on the belly. Um, you see it on a lot of animals who might be climbing arboreally, getting into the trees. So, they want, so when you look up, it's light underneath. But if you look down on them, it's darker on the top. That's why a lot of times you'll see the pattern on the top but no pattern on the belly. You don't need it as much. Some animals will have some spots and little stripes on their bellies, but usually it's more of a light color like this. Counter shading, another one of the colors you can look for at the North Carolina Zoo. You look nice and relaxed. It is warm in the sun, Chelsea. Really? Yeah. I'm still cold. Well, that's because you're not in the sun. In the are you? I am. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Again, we're on our colors episode, and how can you not do something on color and include not include the zebra? But this is a different kind of color, isn't it? We're learning all kinds of ways that animals rely on and use color. And if we were just list them, I mean, there's warning colors, and there's camouflage, and there's mate attraction, and there's disruptive color, like you see in a zebra. It's hard to see where one animal starts and one animal stops in a big herd. So this disruptive color is really important for them. I mean, it provides a lot of other things, too. We've learned a couple times in the past that it might help deter biting insects from landing because it's not a solid space. Uh, it might actually even help cool them, believe it or not, because you get little currents of air or eddies of air around where the two colors touch. And there's an essence of camouflage if they were in a more of a tall, grassy area, but usually you see them on, kind of like you see them here, that was awesome, of, uh, hard to turn and face us. Kind of, you can get the broad side of a zebra. Beautiful animals. But another, another benefit of having that, all those stripes. And each, did you know that each pattern, each stripe is as unique as your and my fingernails? Or finger, fingerprints? That is so interesting. To think about how many zebras are out there in the world. Right? They're and they're all different. All different. And then it helps them, helps them kind of get lost in the herd. Helps them kind of get lost in the herd. It stripes all the way down to the legs. Just neat, neat looking animals. And to think that that bold of a pattern 
is beneficial. Unique colors on animals. And you can't skip the zebra. Well, I hope you had a fun day today. I know that Chelsea and I have had a fun day bringing colors to you from the North Carolina Zoo through your Zoo Adventures program today. And animals use them in so many different ways. And it's kind of fun to dive into that a little bit more here at the North Carolina Zoo with you, our digital guests. It's amazing. It's actually a good, a good camouflage, isn't it? Anyway, we've already done that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope to see you again soon from your Zoo Adventures team. Steve's in front of the camera. Chelsea's behind. Have an amazing day, everybody. We hope to see you again, again soon. Stay safe. The zoo is open. Come by and visit. Bye, y'all.